Okay, today we have an amazing interview lined up for you guys. We have Shane Sterling from Raw Vegan Rising, and we are going to share all of his secrets. We're going to share never before shared things on anti-aging. He is the youngest looking guy on the internet in his 50s. <laughs> Shane is 51 years old. Look at him. He looks amazing. So let's get into all these secrets. And again, never shared before things. We're going to cover everything, skincare routines recipes. What is the deal? Why does he look so good? What is going on? And I've met him in person. He really does look this good. People approach him and say he looks 17 years old. And I would say that's probably true. He looks at least half his age. So let's hop into it. Hey, Shane, how's it going? Hello, Jillian. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much for having me on. And hello to all the viewers and listeners today. It's my goal to share wisdom and value for you guys today to help you understand how you can look and feel your best in your life. Yeah. Like and me, you're yeah. looking it's better than ever. Old. I was saying when we got on the call, you look even younger today <laughs> than I've ever seen you. So you're Benjamin Button. You're looking fresh. Somebody said that to me the other day. They said they messaged me on Instagram and they said, every time I see you, you look younger. But of course, I am getting older like everyone else. So yeah, why is that? That's kind of what we're going to talk about today. How can somebody actually look younger every time you see someone? What am I eating? What am I doing? What's my routine? How do I take care of myself to produce these results? And you know what's cool, Jillian, is somebody just the other day on the internet said, I can't believe you're 50, you look 17. They said yeah. that to me, 17. I mean, I obviously, I don't <laughs> think I look 17, but that's a nice compliment. And I do get 20s all the time. People very regularly think I'm in my 20s in person not just on the internet, but in person at the grocery store and at the gym, people assume I'm in my 20s and they'll say that to me. Oh, you're just young. You know, I'm twice your age. Guys in their 50s will say I'm twice your age. And I'm like, I have to keep my mouth shut. I don't want to like rub it in. So I, you know, I come on here to tell and share my story, but out in the public and in person, I almost feel like I have to keep it under wraps because what I do is so radically different than what the rest of the world is doing. Yeah. You know, and I was, I had a girlfriend over the, the Yeah. I had a friend over this morning and she thought you looked 27. Like I showed her a picture and still that's like almost half your age. Right. And I, I saw a side by side yeah. of you and somebody else that was your age, like a couple weeks ago. And the other person like literally looks like they could be your father. Like you literally in no diss to anybody and everything is not looks yeah. at all. I agree. And this channel has so much more depth to it than looks. If you're just turning in right now and you think we're just like all oh, so materialistic, we're not. There's a huge level of spirituality on this channel and so much depth. But I do want to say like oftentimes when you're looking good, you're glowing. That's your body saying, okay, you're doing something right. Something is running mm. right. Things are working for most of the time, right? I get it. That's not always the case, but a lot of the time it is. Well, absolutely. It's not just about how we look. It's about how we feel. It's about our consciousness. It's about our enthusiasm to take on life. It's about our purpose, our fulfillment, our work in the world, you know, who we are, how we see ourselves, our optimism, our, br uh, our brain and our gut connection, our mental health. It's all of it, of course. So you can't fake health and you can see health in people's skin and eyes and hair and nails and aura. You can see youth and vitality and health in someone's aura. That's what I believe. So you can't fake that. And for someone my age in my 50s, I think I have an aura that's youthful. And that's really the key is why do I have a youthful aura? And that's what I want to really talk about first, Jillian, is why? Why do I have a youthful aura besides how I look? Why does somebody think I look 27 or 28? Is And I think that, you know, I'm a very spiritual person and I've never felt like I fit in in this world. Mm -hmm. And this is, I think, the key I want to share with people. It's It's bigger than people might realize. I've never really fit in. I consider myself kind of a black sheep. That's what I call myself. I'm radically self-referencing. I'm just doing it different. I don't think like other people. So when I go and watch the news or I listen to institutional belief systems or I listen to professors at colleges, and I, when I look at the world, I just think different. I feel different. I don't feel like I belong here, but that's my mission. I'm here to help change this world. That's why I'm a fully raw vegan. I'm going to operate at the highest level. And I just have to do things my own way. So I'm radically self-referencing. I don't buy into the BS of our global narrative. I don't really care. I'm on my own track. And I think that plays a huge part 
in how my aura projects and how I've aged over the years because I really have an optimism in my heart. I really feel like the universe is smiling upon me. Like everything is conspiring on my behalf. And I've had friends mm. who are my same age who are like stark gray and wrinkled because they're in fear, so much fear. Every day they're stressed out about their bills. They're stressed out about uh, mm -hmm. life, they're stressed out about work. And I see them holding the stress in their body and they don't know how to release it and they just age. And I have friends my own age that look like my father. And that's just really the truth. It is, but so, how do we release that stress? Yeah, well, that's the key for one, just do your own thing. Don't buy in to what other people say. March to the beat of your own drum. Be okay with being different. Be okay with being yourself and following your own narrative. We are, you know, it's like I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. We don't need the world to validate us. The world doesn't validate me. People don't validate me. I validate myself. That's why I'm a raw vegan, because I know eating fresh, raw living foods helps my body, my mind, my soul, my gut, my detoxification. And while it is different than what most people are doing, I can't go out to dinner with my friends at the restaurant all the time. That's not what I'm here to do. I'm here to do a different thing, and I'm okay with it. And I've uh, learned how to apply myself and have a real mission, a self-appointed goal and mission and purpose in the world, which makes me feel really proud of myself. And I have something to work toward. And that gives me a reason to get out of bed every day. So that's where this youthful vitality aura can come from, is just a reason to live, a reason to apply ourselves, a reason to make a difference in the world, a vision bigger than ourselves. You know, really, how are we going to leave our legacy on this planet? Who are we going to who are we going to be here? And how are we going to be remembered? Are we going to leave the world a better place than how we found it? This is how I think, you know? See, and yeah, say like, say the last 20 years, say from like 30 till now or 25 or even 40 till now, you were doing a corporate job that you despised, sitting in traffic for an hour each way every day. I'm just saying these kids in Toronto, we have this bad traffic and I know some people that really aren't happy in their jobs, which sucks. And say you were doing that. Do you think you would still have this youthful Benjamin Button going on. If you were going into a job sitting in a cubicle filled with anxiety and stress, counting down the hours. Yeah, definitely, definitely not. No, stress takes its toll. So we want to counteract stress as much as possible. And number one is that you just don't hold it in your body. You don't hold it in your space, your aura, your energy. You just don't hold it. So you got to release, you got to let go, you got to have faith. You know, faith is the key that makes everything work. Faith that the world is going to work out. Faith that everything's going to be okay. You know, I mean, everybody loves the Bob Marley lyric, you know, like everything's going to be all right, you know, and that's really the, the mantra we need to tell ourselves is that every little thing's going to be all right. It's okay that life is stressful and, you know, things aren't you know, always beneficial out in the world when we watch the news, but that doesn't affect us. We need to say, okay, am I safe right here, right now? You know, and that is one of the keys is just being in the present moment, loving ourselves and treating our body with the highest level of respect. And this goes back to when I was 17, I went vegan at the age of 17 and I've been focused on a plant-based diet ever since for 35 years now. I've been See, focused a on a plant-based diet. That's why my that's daughter- a long time. My daughter, she's 11. She just went plant-based. And I say, well, you're going to look like Shane now when you're 51. Because look at you starting it. I think, yeah, she's 11. Yeah. Like, it's crazy, right? It does make a difference, right? All those years, like feeding your body healthier foods versus if you spent 17 to 50 eating the standard American diet, right? It's a no-brainer for sure, right? No-brainer. And I want every listener to hear me and to understand that eating cooked food takes away from our health and our vitality and our youthfulness. Eating animal products is number one. We have to get off the animal products. So I intuitively knew I couldn't eat animal products as a very young teen. So that was my first step was how do I eat whole food plant-based? And I would eat cooked food, but I focused on whole food and I focused on really simple foods, steamed squash. I would make nut milks at home in my blender where I would just literally blend hemp seeds or mm -hmm. cashews or almonds or something. I would make all my own food at home. I got really into that. And I got into juicing. 
So when I was 18, my dad bought me a juicer for like Christmas or something. And I would make green juice and carrot juice and beet juice and celery juice at the age of 18. And I would get into that. You know, I would make celery uh, shots and parsley shots and juice all these greens. Mm -hmm. And I knew intuitively that was the path for me. Health, vitality, fresh, raw, living food. Juicing clearly changed Shane's life. Look at the guy. It has also changed my life so much as well. I am a daily juicer. I also did a 37 day juice fast that changed my life. And I quickly want to show you guys the best juicer in the world on the market. Shane also, I believe uses this one as well. This is my personal favorite juicer, the Nama J2. And they've also recently come out with accessories, which you can add on to your Nama J2 purchase. And that's a large three liter hopper a large three liter pitcher and the pulp catcher here. So you can literally juice so much at once. I'm gonna make a big batch of orange juice right now. It makes the cleanest juice. Okay, look how much juice we just made at once. The best quality juice. This juicer is incredible and you get so much more juice from your produce too. So it's totally worth the money. I cannot recommend it enough. This will just make you get healthier, feel great, live your best life. Look at that. So delicious. Now back to the amazing podcast. And I didn't go fully raw vegan until many, many years later in my life because it was a hurdle. It took me really kind of getting into my big purpose, my big why in life to go fully raw vegan. But all those years through my teens, 20s, 30s, I ate simple and I ate plant-based and I didn't eat animal products. So meat, dairy, and eggs are the big culprits, in my opinion. Those are the biggest culprits. And people might want to blame processed foods and sugars for quick aging or bad aging or uh, premature aging. But I intuitively know it is animal products that have the biggest effect on our aging. And the reason why is multifold, but one is uric acid buildup. Those foods are acid forming foods, acid, ash, residue, metabolic residue in the body. So when you're eating dairy or eggs, it might seem harmless, but there's ash residue. That acidity builds up. It leads to aging. It leads to not feeling your best. It leads to a depressed kind of aura. It leads to arthritis, acidosis symptoms, inflammation, autoimmune, all of the symptoms. So when you go plant-based, all of a sudden, you're going to feel great. But you can't just go plant-based. You can't go starch-based vegan. You can't go processed food vegan with processed fake meats and processed mm -hmm. fake cheeses, mm -hmm. that's going to be a disaster. So if we look at this honestly, okay, and we're, we're going to go plant-based, we're going to try a vegan diet, we have to focus on whole food only, you know, what are we going to turn to? Are we going to turn to rice, beans, and potatoes? Or are we going to turn to fruits and greens and nuts and seeds? That's what I eat, fruits yeah. and greens, nuts and seeds. And that's what I've been focused on for over three decades. So while starch is a normal and it's comfortable and it's filling and it, you know, I just had a, a client of mine mm -hmm. complaining that it was hard to be raw and that he was craving rice and potatoes. And he says, I'm a hardworking man. I work a construction job. I can't feel full on raw food. I need rice and potatoes. That is incorrect. That is the microbes in the gut mm -hmm. demanding starch. So for if you want to look like I do at 51, if you want to have the best chance at amazing aging, you have to transition your gut microbes to thrive on raw plant foods, not cooked starches. And as long as you are having these cravings for fried food, cooked oils, eggs and meat and milk, and starches like rice and beans and potatoes, your microbes are in control of you. So this is one thing that I've always been really good at from the age of 17 when I first went vegan was being in control of my microbes. If I had cravings, I wouldn't listen. I wouldn't give in. I wouldn't give them what they were demanding. Mm -hmm. So I've always been able to control the microbes in my body. And that has been, I think, one of the keys for the beautiful gut microbiome, the garden in my gut, and then the beautiful connection to the mind, the serotonin, the hormones and the proper gut brain connection so that I have that optimism. Okay. So yeah. the food we eat fortifies our optimism. And remember the first thing I said was like an otherworldly optimism to get through this life unscathed, unwrinkled, unbeaten down.
If you want to boost to your aura, you have to have the confidence, the the you know the 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 reason to trust. Okay, and the food that you put in your gut and the way that those microbes are interacting with your brain is key. So fresh raw living foods is key. Green juice is key. Fruits are key. Smoothies, salads, raw nuts and seeds, raw oils. Actually, let me share a pro tip. I mean, if anyone wants to walk away with something amazing from this video, it's right here. I'm going to drop it right now. Just avoid starch. Like I was saying, rice, potatoes, beans, mm -hmm. just avoid cooked starches and avoid cooked oils, heated fats. Okay. And people are like, what are heated fats? People don't even know. Anything cooked in a pan, you put olive oil in a pan, stir fry. Vegans love stir fries, right? But you're putting oil in that pan. Avoid the heated fats. Also, if you cook animal products, like if you sear a steak or you have pasteurized dairy products from the store, that's heated fats. Also, all the processed foods and the oils, everything. So most food, 99% of what's considered normal food is heated, oxidized, chemically toxic oils for our body. So I've always intuitively eaten raw fats and lower fats and really avoided high fat foods most of my life, just intuitively, naturally. I don't like steak. I don't like animal products. I don't like fatty fish. I don't like that kind of food. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather have like steamed zucchini, you know, if I'm going to have like cooked food, something like that, steamed broccoli, mm -hmm. right? And so that is what helps the gut, the brain, the aura, the skin. It helps detox your body so that the toxins don't accumulate in your body. So those yeah. are some key. And say Pro someone's watching, they're like, if someone's watching and they're like, okay, I want to get rid of the toxins. Maybe I will stop eating eggs, meat, and dairy. Like you said, they're like, I want to glow up. I want to look like you. But then they're like, oh, maybe in time I'll look worse if I drop those things or I need the nutrition from those things, then what do you have to say about that? Everybody's afraid that if they don't get enough protein from animal products, that they're going to have health problems. But nothing could be further from the truth. You have to get off of animal products to have proper health because the animal products make our body weak and generative and dependent on the stimulant animal products. So animal products, meat, milk, and eggs are highly stimulating to the body and will create a dependency. Also, animals and livestock are fed supplements. So we become dependent on the supplements that they're fed. And our gut becomes weak because these are denatured foods. There's no fiber. There's no strength required in our digestive system to mm -hmm. eat these foods. So what we really want is we want our body to become strong at digesting raw whole plant foods. That's not going to happen right away. Okay. I've been at this multiple decades. You have to strengthen the gut. So the first thing that happens when you give up animal products is you get weak, you get sick, you get tired, you get dark circles under your eyes, you go through a detox. And that's when most people think, oh my God, a vegan diet makes me sick. It's just the first stage of coming off of the drugs of animal mm -hmm. products, the hormones and the supplements and the meat and the milk and the eggs. So you got to let your body kind of go through a detox phase. And then the second step is to rebuild your gut microbiome to thrive on raw foods. Now, this is what I teach, and I have many, many clients who come to me, and I teach that we want to start by cleansing the bowels, ideally do a 40-day juice fast one time all the way to cleanse your bowels thoroughly. A juice fast is not a diet, it's not a lifestyle, you don't have to do it ongoing, it's a one-time intervention protocol for removing waste and plaque and biofilm that is inhibiting absorption and digestion and utilization of our proper diet, raw living foods. So we do the juice fast, we cleanse the bowels, we empty our GI tract, and then we break the fast properly with 100% raw vegan diet, mm -hmm. and we stay raw mm -hmm. vegan for one to two years. After that, that will revolutionize your health. That'll mm -hmm. change your life forever. And that's all you got to do. And in that first year, you're going to go through a, a really big awakening that you have terrible digestion. You have weak hydrochloric acid. You've got weak bowels. You can't digest salads. You get gas. You get bloating. So this is where the real rubber meets the road. This is where the work is is just building the strength in the digestive system to thrive on a raw vegan diet. 
If you can do that, you're going to be in the clear. And then by year two, you're going to start to feel amazing. So Jillian, yeah. you and I have both gone through this yeah. transition. I mean, we're both raw vegan. I'm, I'm coming up on seven years. So, you know, it takes time to go through the detox and to get your gut strong enough to digest raw foods. Yeah. I have um, two quart jars right now in my kitchen of sprouted lentils. That's what I eat for protein. That's what I eat for, you know, that starchy hit. Instead of having cooked beans, I have the sprouted lentils. It has that same effect, but it's raw and mm -hmm. it's living and it's filled with enzymes and water and fiber. But you have to kind of eat them regularly to be able to digest those properly. So if I um, don't eat sprouted lentils for like a bunch of months in a row, mm -hmm. then I have gas or bloating when I start eating them again. You have to build the strength, right? Your gut has to adapt to what you want to eat. And this is key. If you can help your gut adapt to a raw plant-based diet, you can eat anything you want as long as it's raw. So if you're on animal products, if you're eating a starch-based, animal-based, cooked-based diet, you just need to strengthen your body up. And it's the yeah. best thing you could possibly do. If you eat plant-based, if you go raw, if you drop the cooked oils, if you drop the starches, it's going to bring a light to your aura. It's going to just boost the way you look. It's going to drop 20 years off the way you look almost instantly. It's so worth it. And True. even if you do get sick for a while, even if you do get dark circles under your eyes or detox symptoms or feel sick for a while, it's worth it because look, we're going to age either way. And like the people saying to me, Shane, every time I see you, you look younger. It's true. We're right. It, the time is marching. Who are you going to be in a year from now? You got to ask yourself, look yourself in the eye in the mirror and say, who am I going to be in one year from now or in two years from now? Am I going to take on this healing revolution mm -hmm. for my gut and my body? Or am I going to continue with this mundane comfort zone, BS, normal narrative that everybody yeah. is spewing out in society, you know, and people always give me the, well, we've done this for thousands of years. The history is somehow justifying what we do now. Like we have to keep going on this path of desperate survival. Like we were cavemen, mm -hmm. you know, we're not cavemen. We have fruit in the grocery store and we just need to adapt to a better higher vibrational way of living and being that supports our mind and our body and our soul. We can leave behind the caveman days and evolve into a new awakening, spiritual-based type of evolutionary human that's moving the needle one notch further on the scale of evolution. True. And as time marches on, not only do we anti-age and our aura becomes miraculously vibrant, but that we're helping the future of humanity. We're moving the evolutionary scale one step further. Mm -hmm. So we can, we don't have to listen to that BS. And that goes back to the first thing I said on this video is that I am a black sheep. I'm going against the mainstream narrative. Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. But that's the truth. The truth is that the mainstream is going to lead us like lemmings off the cliff. And so if you want to go off the cliff with the rest of them, go right ahead. That's fine. I have no judgment on that. But what I'm doing here is something different. And I am a messenger from the future. That's how I feel, literally. I feel like a time traveler sometimes, like I'm from the future coming back in time with a message saying, this is what we're doing it. in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, if we want to look uh, good in the future and we want to have this glow up like you, like I want to look this good at 51. Right now I'm 41. So tell us, like sticking to the food for a second, what are maybe some top foods that you think make us look our best or like any key recipes that are your secret sauce for having this glow? Yeah, great topic. So I think one of the keys is smoothies for breakfast, mm -hmm. salads for dinner. Okay, so for one, we got to get off cooked dinners. We should do raw dinners. I mean, nothing will give you a glow up faster than raw food for dinner. And everybody struggles with the dinner time. That's when we want to feel heavy. That's when we want to feel sedated because we've been stressed out all day. And so we want to sedate. Now, we might think we just want to feel full, but we're really trying to mentally numb ourselves and sedate with cooked food. That's what we're really doing. So we have to retrain our brain, have salads for dinner, nutrient density. Now, my breakfast smoothie is one of the keys of my lifestyle. I have nutrient-dense breakfast smoothies filled with calories. 
filled with superfoods, filled with raw fats. Okay, so I focus on omega-3 fats. I put superfoods and I put uh, the raw carbohydrates and I put a lot of calories in my normal in my normal everyday breakfast smoothie, okay? And this is what I've been doing for the last seven years. So when people say, Shane, you look younger every time I see you, it's because of my smoothie, my breakfast smoothie and my salad for dinner. And you've These had that keys. smoothie every day almost for like that long? I do the same smoothie every day. Okay, I, I try to mix it up. I've video before about what's in it again. This is the cacao ashwagandha smoothie, right? Correct. Yeah. So my smoothie is bananas and dates as a base. I usually mm -hmm. do three dates, you know, three to five dates, one to two bananas. I will add a scoop of protein powder sometimes, but not always. I go very, very light on the protein powder. I don't like processed protein powders, but sometimes I will for mm -hmm. taste or texture mostly. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think that's a key, key component of processed okay. Pro, you know, powder is more of like a taste or texture thing, mm -hmm. but the key ingredients are cacao, maca root, ashwagandha, and minerals. And I've had the same smoothie every day for seven years. Okay. So about three tablespoons of raw cacao powder. I get the Terrasol brand, which is actually made here in um, uh, Texas. It is pure. It's pure, raw, cold processed, a uh, really high quality raw cacao. And so three tablespoons of that is not enough. You don't get wired. It does mm -hmm. not make you wired. Okay. It's no, not clearly. Like you're yeah. High. It doesn't for you. Yeah. No, it's not about getting like a buzz from the cacao. It's more about the phytonutrients, the flavonoids, the antioxidants. Cacao protects the skin. It detoxes the body. It's, it's, I mean, it's one of the keys. Also the ashwagandha and the maca root are adaptogenic. So that helps the body adapt to stress. Is that what so that means? Yeah. Are, what are they, what are those? Yeah. Do? Yeah. Adaptogenic um, helps the body adapt to stress. So it, it is like energizing, but it doesn't stimulate the central nervous system. Not like coffee. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is a, a naturally energizing, uplifting thing that these provide. I also do uh, the adaptogenic mushrooms I've been doing also in my morning smoothies. I didn't mention that. And those are in there too mostly cordyceps. So it's really the cacao, the maca, the ashwagandha, and the cordyceps that I do every day. Now, how much these contribute to anti-aging, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's more of like, this what makes me feel my best. And I'm consistent because it makes me feel my best. And I like the way that adaptogenic herbs make me feel. And I'm not eating all these cooked foods. And I'm not relying on, you know, steak and eggs for breakfast or mm -hmm. oatmeal or something. I mean, oatmeal is the worst possible breakfast. It is so sluggish to the bowels, takes so long to digest. It spikes your blood sugar. It's terrible for you. It's not good. And this people think that's healthy. So really, my goal is to get the most nutrition from the least amount of food. Um, yeah. And that where, that's where minerals come in. I put three different types of minerals in my morning smoothies, I'm always going after minerals. I experiment. I try lots of different minerals. I love the fulvic colloidal uh, min minerals. I love the trace minerals. And these are mineral salts that are mined out of like the, the salt lake in Utah and mined out of, you know, salt mines and things where these trace minerals, we're getting micro trace amounts of nutrients out of the soil that don't come from the food because agricultural farming practices don't include proper nutrition and replenishing of the soil. So I go out of my way to try every different mineral I can. I have my favorites. Um, I've been doing the cell food lately. That's an oxygenating mineral supplement. Um, so I do minerals and the, that's just a key. So the superfoods and the minerals. So an average person would look at my morning smoothie and they'd be like, that's not even food. Mm -hmm. But to me, it's, I don't need a lot of density. I'm not looking for cooked fats. I'm not looking for starch. I'm looking for high nutrient density. So I can get that mm -hmm. in a very small package, you know, and I add a lot of ice and water and I blend it up and it's like a nice, um, you know, milkshake or something is what it tastes like. But it's just uh, a wonderful way to get those, the nutrient density, the minerals that the body needs, the herbs that the body needs. And then you're getting so much from so little. And that's the key. Yeah. 
the other key to not aging is not over consuming food. We don't want to eat a lot of food. And True. I know this intuitively. I've known this since my 20s. I've done a lot of intermittent fasting. I've done a lot of just really not being into food. I, and I'm not, I love food. Okay. Just like everybody, every, who doesn't love eating, but I do restrict my, um, you know, I don't just eat whatever I want. I don't, I don't, because I know that's not good for me. I eat what's good for my body and I restrict all the stuff that's not good for my body. And so, yeah, I don't get to eat whatever I want. Yeah, and that's because fine it's me because it's not always yeah. what we're eating. It's not always what we're eating. It's also what we're not putting in too, right? Like you're not putting in yeah. the toxic stuff, like bottom line, you know, and you're not drinking alcohol. Like a lot of people, at least where I grew up, a lot of people are drinking alcohol every day, right? For like in their thirties, forties, fifties, sixties and smoking. So like you're not doing these toxic habits. And I think that plays a big part as well, or eating like KFC or Taco Bell, right? Oh yeah. I mean, eating fast food is an absolute no, no. I mean, <laughs> I think the last time I even had any fast food at all was over 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what's very interesting? And people, the listeners might be surprised by this, but I smoked tobacco for 24 years. From the age of 16 to 30, I smoked tobacco. I grew up in a household. My dad and mom both smoked. You know, it was uh, the 70s when I was a kid. And then as I was a teenager in the 80s, everybody smoked. And so I just kind of picked up the habit. I got into rolling my own tobacco, so I wasn't smoking like Marlboros or anything. And I was never an over smoker. I wouldn't chain smoke or anything. I would use tobacco like other people. I liked it. I enjoyed it. But I smoked for 24 years. So why am I, why do I look the way I do after I smoked for 24 years? Because I've been vegan for 35 years. I've been mm -hmm. plant-based. I've been juicing. I've been fortifying my body with high nutrition, not burdening my body with toxic foods so I can detox. My body has been able to detox. I intermittent fast. I don't overeat, you know, and I have raw food for dinner. And I've yeah, actually so anybody been who's wondering what your evening salad is, let us know too. Yeah. So my dinner salad is another key. There's nothing that'll make you feel better than eating a just raw salad for dinner, big raw mm -hmm. salad. Okay. I'm not talking about like one of those restaurant salads with a couple things yeah. on it or whatever. No big raw vegan style meal salad. So I'll start with like a big amount of greens, you know, and maybe half a pound of greens and I'll put all the veggies on there, but really nuts and seeds. I do pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, walnuts, hemp seeds, flax seeds, sometimes chia seeds. I will put all these nutrient dense ingredients in my salad. Mm -hmm. um, that really helps in sprouts, uh, lentil sprouts, other types of sprouts that I'm making or buying. You know, luckily I have, I have been very determined to make enough money to afford to eat whatever I want. So I can mm -hmm. afford the best sprouts and the best foods from the grocery stores. And I go out of my way to find like boutique lettuces that are grown locally and things like this. Now, not everybody has that luxury, but because I'm a raw vegan, I have optimism, which makes me see the world more optimistically, which makes me see opportunity better, which makes me more successful, which makes me more money, True. which allows me to feed myself better. That's so happening to me really too, yeah. Feeding, yeah. So it's a cycle of getting on the up escalator. The better you feed yourself, the better you're going to be in life, the more money you're going to make, which you can feed yourself better. So it, you know, we got to get on the up escalator. So salad for dinner is a key nutrient density. So go for what I recommend is finding the best, the local seasonal veggies and fruits and the best, most fresh raw nuts and seeds that you can put on your salads. I always put on nuts and seeds on my salad and I like hemp seeds for my dressing. I will blend up my own dressings and that just allows me to control how much protein I'm getting and how much omega-3 fats I'm getting. So I'm very conscious of my carbs, my fats and my proteins. And I'll just say, as a raw vegan, you don't have to give up protein. You just have to get protein from raw vegan sources. Mm -hmm. And I've made training videos on the complete guide to raw vegan protein sources. So for anybody who's saying, I can't get protein on a raw vegan diet, you just haven't educated yourself on how to do it. Mm -hmm. You haven't educated yourself on what raw proteins even are. So I wouldn't jump to conclusions and assume you can't do it. I would say with proper education, proper training, proper time invested, 
you can be a fully raw vegan like me. You can revolutionize your health, you know, drop the weight, reverse your health problems, reduce the inflammation, bring your aura up, get on that up escalator to be the best version of yourself. Of course you can do that. And you owe it to yourself to do it. You probably really should take on the journey. Because like I said, when we look at ourselves in the mirror, ask ourselves, who are we going to be in two years? Are you going to start your healing journey now? Or are you going to stay the same? Mm -hmm. You know, you can start your healing journey now. You know, come along, join in with Jillian and I, do a raw vegan diet. It's the best way to go. And there's absolutely just no question. If you start now, you're going to be better off in two years from now. Two years is going to pass either way. Are your friends going to say, Mm, boy, she looks older or mm, he's not looking so good or wow, you look younger every time I see you. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be incredible? I mean, that's, yeah, well, that's you know, <laughs> benefit, <laughs> yeah. right. That's the benefit of eating a whole raw vegan plant based diet. It's incredible. Again, pro tip, just don't eat starch and don't eat anything heated uh, in the oils. Don't eat any mm -hmm. heated fats or Okay, because that's mm -hmm. oxidized, highly toxic to the body. The body can't overcome that very easily. Too much uric acid buildup from animal products, too much acid from the oxidized fats. So just eat raw fats and no starch. Yeah. And you're good. You're going to be on your upward spiral right there. Just those tips alone. Yeah. Okay, great. And I still want to talk about your tips with like hair care, skin care, a few other things. But before we do that, I have to clear a couple things up because I know people will wa be watching and they will for sure comment this just based on my past mm. recollection of our videos. They will say this is all fine and dandy, Shane, but clearly we're working with genetics here and this is why you look so good. Or they will say clearly we're working with Botox and filters and you dye your hair. So if we could clear mm. that up so that people can understand the true substance here, then that would be wonderful. Mm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about genetics. So everybody says genetics on my videos too. I mean, I can't mm -hmm. tell you, I get thousands of videos or comments on my videos saying, oh, it's genetics. Doesn't have anything to do with diet. Oh yeah. Well, my <laughs> sister, funny to me. You know, yeah. I don't want to throw, I don't want to throw my sister under the bus. I love my sister so much. She's a great person, but she's never been vegan. She's never been plant-based. Actually, she did go plant-based once in her thirties for like I think maybe a year and it was the best she ever looked. Wow. And now I, I don't say that to her, but it was, it was like a year. She was macrobiotic cooked steamed veggie vegan. And it was, she looked amazing, but she's a drinker. Okay. She likes to have her glass of wine after work and she does smoke uh, tobacco, I believe. And she's two years younger than me. And she looks like she could be my mom. You wow. Know? She really, I does. hope she's yeah, not so watching. Well, I though. know she won't. She won't. Yeah. I mean, she. I'm not trying to throw her under the bus. I'm just saying, like, time hasn't done well for her, you know, because she's that she doesn't eat right. She doesn't eat the way I do. She thinks she's eating normal. She thinks she's eating healthy with oatmeal for breakfast and, you know, I don't know, chicken salad for dinner or whatever mm -hmm. people eat. I don't know. I don't eat those foods. I'm marching to the beat of my own drum. I got a different view on the world and I'm not part of that world. And so I sit down with my sister. If we go out to food once in a while, you know, I'll, I'll say, hey, you really should try a plant-based diet. You really should. I've said it to her a thousand times and she just doesn't. And so now when I, every time I see my sister, I think she looks older, you know, and that's, we have the same genetics. Okay. We have the same genetics. So that True. is not genetics. Also. Yeah. So I've never dyed my hair. Even when I was a teenager uh, in the 80s, I did bleach my hair once when I was 16, but I've really never been into dyeing my hair. I absolutely do not dye my hair, never have. You can see a couple grays in my beard and mustache, but I don't have a single gray hair on my head mm -hmm. at all. People always say in my videos too, on social media constantly. I mean, I, I get, I don't know, 10, 20 a day, people saying I've had plastic surgery and Botox and that it's filters and all this stuff. It's just simply not. I mean, I'm sitting in front of my camera right hot now. I have a Logitech Brio webcam that I'm using. There's no way to put filters on it. I don't know what people yeah. are talking about. This is recorded <laughs> in the Me Zoom. Too. When they say that, I'm like, how do you put a fit? And yeah, I'm recording this video, right? I'm the one recording you on Zoom. I don't have a yeah. filter going on over here. I've never put a filter on a YouTube video. Give me a break. How do you even do that? And people also say like you're lying about your age, but that's 
Not yeah. true, because I flew you to LA for some content once, and I booked it with your passport, and I saw. I know you're 51. I believe you on. I all should these have things. my passport. I, I should have my ID to show here in this video. Um, yeah, no, I don't. I don't lie about my age. I'm definitely 51, born uh, January 10th, 1973. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in Palm, Pennsylvania, in rural Pennsylvania, I grew up in like Amish country and in the 70s. So you're definitely the youngest I, and like 51 just, year old. I know for sure. Hands down. I can't think of any, no offense to anybody, <laughs> like, but I can't think of anybody that looks as good in their fifties. It's really incredible. And your hair. Okay. You've never dyed your hair. So mm -hmm. tell us why you think it's still shining in this beautiful color, looking youthful, looking healthy. Like what is your hair care? How many times a week do you wash your hair? Do you get a lot of sun on your hair? Do you have like foods you think that matter or like and what's your routine with like what products are you using or anything like that i definitely go for really natural simple products i'll just mm -hmm. buy shampoo and conditioner from the natural market with mm -hmm. no you know nasty ingredients but i don't have some secret with that i wash my hair like one to two times a week you know i don't overwash my hair um i will put in some like hair oil just to keep it nice you know but I don't really use any products in my hair. So it's more of just like a hair oil. And there is one product I use to maybe thicken it up a little bit here and there for videos, just to kind of give it a little body. But it's a natural product that doesn't have any toxic ingredients in it. So I just try to go for like natural, simple mm -hmm. products. And I don't have any secret routine to share. Um, I would say the key, though, is diet. You know, eating raw fats, of course, helps the body have that glow. If you're eating cooked fats, then you're eating chemically altered, oxidized, toxic chemicals. So steak or French fries or baked potatoes that are browned with acrylamides, you know, a muffin, you know, all of these cooked mm -hmm. browned foods, so much toxins, this is going to affect your hair and skin and nails and all of that. Actually, just my nails grow so fast. Even my girlfriend, she's always amazed how fast my nails grow. They really grow fast, crazy fast. So that was never an issue when I was a cooked vegan. My nails didn't grow particularly fast as a cooked vegan. But as a raw vegan of seven years, focusing on gut health, cleansing my bowels, allowing my body to be strong, my nails grow incredibly fast. I don't have a routine for my skin. People think I know I got to do something. I have to do some routine with my skin. I don't. I literally, I'll put a little jojoba oil on my skin after the shower. That's about it. I mean, that's like all. Every I time do. you shower and do you shower every day and then you put that on or no? No, I shower like once a week, twice a week, maybe. You know, I, that's healthier for like our body, for yeah. like the microbes on our skin and everything. And for your immune system, I've heard that's actually way healthier. And the way you wash your hair one to two times a week, like my hairdresser in New York and all the top hair people, they say like, do not wash your hair like every day. Yeah. I intuitively just don't like washing off all the natural oils and stuff. My body kind of reaches a uh, homeostasis where it's more comfortable and it just feels healthier instead of always stripping my body of all its natural oils with soaps every day. It's never felt good for me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's been times in my life where I've showered less than once a week, although now I do shower once a week consistently, generally not much more than that. Like um, this week I showered twice, uh, but normally I shower once. I don't know. You know, I mix it up between once or twice max. And it's more about the natural oils on my skin mm -hmm. and my hair that I like to maintain. So I'm really trying not to strip those off. That's definitely my only skin and hair tip. And the only thing I do, I don't exfoliate my skin. I don't have any kind of skin routine. I really don't. Other than diet, I mean, I think about the foods I put into my body as my skin routine. You know, like when I eat my morning smoothies with this with the cacao and the ashwagandha, I know that cacao is helping my skin. It's proven. You can do the research on cacao and skin. Mm -hmm. It's very, very helpful for the skin. The flavonoids and the antioxidants in cacao, it's a very high antioxidant, uh, mineral dense, nutrient dense superfood. Uh, it's been used for thousands and thousands of years. I honestly think my three tablespoons of, of raw cacao daily in my morning smoothie is one of the reasons why I continually look younger every time people see me. Because it's that's good, the it's one working thing for you. Sorry, it's the one thing what? It's the one thing that I do 
every single day. I don't shower every day. I don't put stuff on my skin every day. The only other thing I do every day besides raw, besides my cacao smoothie, is I exercise and I get my blood pumping every single day, whether it's just a walk or mm. exercise at the gym. Every single day, I like to feel flush in my skin. Like I, I like my heart rate to get up and to get a little sweat. I like to break a sweat every single day. And that makes us look younger, right? Getting that exercise. Like after this, I'm going to go for a walk outside or go to the gym. And that helps us look younger too, right? Rather than if we don't take yeah. the time to exercise. Oh, yeah. I mean, it just brings a little like color to the cheeks, a little mm -hmm. glow. It just helps you uh, detox. You know, it helps detox the bowels. Walking is particularly good. I mean, the research on walking, it's really a great biohack. Walking is so miraculous. I try to walk probably a mile every day. I have this beautiful neighborhood I live in here in Austin, Texas, and I can walk the neighborhoods. So I just go do a walk in the morning first thing every day. And I just get that glow in my face and you can just feel that little bit of like heat on your skin and the sweat comes out. That's helping bring oxygen to your skin, helping bring nutrients to your skin and helping bring waste away from your skin. So for me, when I think about skin routine, I want to break a sweat every day. That's my skin routine. Yeah. Yeah. So and you love and, your life. And, I feel like you love your life. You are engaged to somebody you love. You love Austin. Your career is flourishing. You're looking amazing. You're feeling amazing. So I think like that's a key to staying and looking youthful too, is creating a life in all areas. Like I understand we're going to go through crap in our life too, but creating a life we love, right? That we feel happy and excited to get up for every day. And then that'll shine through us and make us look young because we have that childhood excitement for our life, right? Yeah, it's so key. I talked about that at the beginning of this. I'm a spiritual person and I have mm -hmm. a mission here. I, I feel like I've come from the future with a message to share about raw living foods. And I want to share it with people and I want them to understand how good they can feel as they age and how beneficial a raw plant-based diet can really be for their life. And I have a mission with that. That's my purpose work. It's my mission. And it's very connected to a very strong vision. And that's what people need. We need some reason to live. You know, I'm a practitioner. I work, I'm a coach. You know, I work with mm -hmm. clients and I meet people who are on death's door. I meet people who are chronically ill. I meet people who are struggling with health problems desperately. The doctors can't help them in and out of doctors and hospitals all, you know, for decades. And one thing I can see consistently with people struggling with health like that is they don't have a will to live. They don't have a purpose. They, mm -hmm. they are not on their mission in this earth and in this lifetime. So there's nothing more inspiring than someone who's on purpose in life. If you don't know what your purpose is, that's the work to do. You got to find your purpose. I actually am a, a mindset mentor. This is what I help people with. I have my coaching programs that I help people find their purpose. I literally work with people every day to help them find their purpose and get on mission in their life, whether that's with their diet, whether that's with their income, whether that's with their relationships, whatever people need. I have programs. I work with people to help them up to that next level. Because look, we need mentorship in our lives. If we don't know where to start, if you don't have purpose, you just need mentorship. Mentorship is the first step. Mentorship mm -hmm. is how you go from where you are to where you want to be. Mm -hmm. You got to apprentice with someone who's done it, who knows how. You know, if you want to learn how to start a business and make a million dollars, you apprentice with a business mentor. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. If you want to be a raw vegan, you apprentice with a raw vegan mentor. Apprenticeship is the next step. So for anybody who's like who likes this message, feels the the inspiration, wants to take action, doesn't know what to do next, and is like, I have no idea what I should do. Where do I start? Mm -hmm. You start with mentorship. So for one, you could join my program, Raw Vegan Heroes. That's a starting point. Mm -hmm. um, but really, you want to pay close attention to all of the raw vegans. You know, Jillian, follow Jillian, follow me on social media. I'm Raw Vegan Rising on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook. Follow people who are doing it. Pay attention to what we say, what we do. That's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And okay, so I know you mentioned your girlfriend earlier with the nails and everything. So I just want to touch on relationships for a second. I think this is really a key too, to staying youthful, looking good, feeling full of love and happiness, which essentially makes us look younger too. 
And I think in life, many of us can get stuck in the wrong relationship, right? And that can kind of suck the life out of you, age you, make you look like crap. So how important do you think it is that we're in the right relationship? And what impact do you think do you think that that has on how we age? Hmm. Yeah, being in the right relationship is key. I am in an amazing relationship with an amazing, beautiful, raw vegan woman who is the light of my life. Can't believe that I got so lucky to meet her. We have the same lifestyle. She supports me. She loves what I do. She loves my mission. She always says that about me, uh, to me, that she loves my work. She loves what I stand for. She's a long-term vegan herself, has been for decades. Her dad's even vegan. You know, so she comes from a vegan family, which is really incredible because there's not a lot of vegan men out there. Okay. There's not a lot of men True. who have broken free from the illusion narrative that we have to eat meat to be masculine. We have to eat meat to be strong. We have to eat meat to have muscle. We have to eat meat to be a man. It's a ridiculous narrative that actually destroys the proper masculine energetic, the divine awakened masculine that protects and provides and is really uh, a leader. It destroys the divine masculine, eating animals, eating factory farmed animals from the grocery store, especially. So to have a, a woman in my life whose father knows this and is vegan, mm -hmm. that is incredible. So that's a huge alignment. I couldn't ask for more because <laughs> um, I respect her dad for that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what it's taken me to get this relationship has been you know, pain and loss and blood and sweat and tears. You know, I was married for 15 years recently, you know, more recently to a woman who was not vegan. Um, that was my bad, you know, for getting into a relationship with a non-vegan. And I uh, paid the price. I paid the consequence for that. We did have two children together, which are just the light of my life. I love my daughters. Mm -hmm. uh, they're 15 and 13 now. So I have two teenagers which is incredible for me to be an example to them, but I don't push my narrative on them. I don't try to turn them raw vegan. I just show them through example. And so I really invest in my relationships with the women in my life, with the people in my life that are close to me. My circle of influence is very important, but I had to go through a divorce. I had to sacrifice years of being berated and accosted that my vegan lifestyle was anti-family that it was like went against the being normal you know like mm. my ex-wife was really really a uh, hard you know cookie she did not like me being vegan at all and it threatened her and so we had so much struggle so much strife in our relationship we obviously had to end up getting divorced mm -hmm. and it it was a really great thing it set me free but it just means we prioritize what we have to do in life. We have to prioritize having optimal relationships. We have to prioritizing prioritize having optimal diet, optimal income, optimal empowerment, optimal life purpose, so that we're thriving at the highest level. So for anyone listening who is in a suboptimal relationship with a non-vegan who is, um, you know, who is accosting to you, doesn't want you to be vegan, is not supportive, you got to do what I did ultimately, which is, you know, pay the price, own up to the mistake you've made and undo what you've done and let them go, release them with love and care. Uh, me and my ex-wife went through conscious uncoupling, which is a, a method for splitting up a relationship. It's very intentional and it's very thoughtful and it's not making anybody wrong. So mm -hmm. we did that where we didn't make each other wrong. We just said, hey, we are not supportive of each other and our lifestyles. So let's split. And that's the best way to do it. But you can't keep going. Imagine me right now, everybody. Okay. Imagine me, for those who know me especially, in a relationship with a non-vegan. Could you imagine? At this point, no. And I think it's most important no. we're in we're our authentic self in relationships, right? In our life with every yeah. relationship. And it sounds like you reached a point where you couldn't be your authentic self because she was mad you're vegan and doing things that felt authentic to you, yeah. right? So absolutely true. So I have been doing all of this work behind the scenes to get into my authentic empowerment. So for the last three years now, um, I've been divorced for three years. The last three years have been catching up, investing in the relationships I need to building my business again, because once I felt that freedom, I was like, okay, I get to be my authentic self again. Mm -hmm. So my business has exploded in the last three years. 
Yeah. Interesting. I mean, I've made, mm -hmm. Yeah. My business has been doing better than ever because I am in my authentic energy. So that's what we have to do is we have to do the work to get into authentic alignment in all the pillars of our life. So really there's four pillars of fulfillment that I call it, which is love, money, health, and service. Mm -hmm. And it's a great a little exercise to rate yourself on a scale of one to 10 in each one of those pillars, love, money, health, and service. One, one is terrible, worst case scenario, 10 is best. Mm -hmm. I have worked diligently in my life to bring each one of those four pillars of fulfillment up to an eight or higher. So let's look at my life now. Love, I was just saying, I got an amazing relationship. My love's like a nine or a 10 mm -hmm. right now. Absolutely blessed. So blessed, nine or 10. Um, health, okay, I'm a raw vegan. Obviously my health is a 10, it's a freaking 10, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. My money, my money is a 10. My business mm -hmm. uh, is doing better than ever, I mean, you know, without divulging details, I've made more money in 2023 than I've ever made before in my life. Okay? Me too. I do very, very yeah. well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So money, 10. All right. Service work. I'm a coach. I go out of my way to help people. I have 3000 clients in my group coaching program and, mm -hmm. and hundreds of, I have a hundred business clients right now. I teach business. I teach raw vegan. So I have thousands and thousands of clients, a uh, service work 10. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I, I have worked diligently to get my four pillars to tens. All right. So I want all the listeners to assess your life. Where are you on your scale? One to 10 in love, money, health, and service. If you're less than an eight in any of the categories, especially less than a seven, you've got work to do. You've got work to do and you got to get to work and it's worth it. That's the work of your life. That's the work that you should be investing in not going to the office, not grinding to just keep up with the kids or whatnot, or just get through the day for your grumpy husband to come home and have to cook him dinner, whatever your burden is in your life. You've mm -hmm. got to work to get your love, your money, your health, and your service up to tens, baby. And I've Look done at it. You I'm rock in all these areas. Like that's pretty epic, you know, oh, because a yeah. lot of I people, mean, a lot of times they'll be like, my money's this, but my relationships are crap. Or like this is, you're just like, I got all these areas popping, right? Well, it's not by accident. It's yeah. not a coincidence, Jill. I have been working at this. Okay. I've been working at this. I, mm -hmm. I started my coaching business in 2015 by selling my previous businesses that were like my ball and chain brick and mortar burnt out, so burnt out. So we, I started my my money pillar now is at a 10, but I started back in 2015 by having to sell off and redo my life and go through a dark night of the soul and a reinvention of myself. I had to reinvent myself in my mid forties. That was not easy to do, mm -hmm. but now it's led me to a 10 in my money and my service because it's I switched to coaching, right? So, and then of course I was in a relationship with a non-vegan who hated me being vegan. And always told me that it was the worst example to set for the children. Hmm. You know, how horrible is that? I think it's the best example to set for my children. So I had to do so much work to get out of that in a loving way without burning bridges. My ex-wife and I are still friends. She wishes me the best. I did not burn bridges. Okay. That took no. so much work. See, this is what I wanted to ask you too, because I think with like staying looking fresh, youthful, happy, hydrated, good, like. I know divorce is one thing that can make someone go from looking 40 to 65 in like a year or two. Like, no, seriously, because yeah. I, I think there's that's one thing that can make people angrier than anything, especially when there's kids involved, because you can't ever just say, OK, bye. See you later. We're divorced. Never see you again. When you have kids, you're tied together for the rest of the lifetime, essentially see each other at weddings, visits, have to deal with finances, all these things. And these are very emotional heated things. And they can make people angry as F. And that leads to like excessive aging, no matter how healthy you are. So how have you managed to look so fresh, stay so happy, stay so calm, not let the stress and bitterness destroy you through something so severe as a divorce? That's a really million dollar question. Okay. That's the million dollar question. And it goes back to the very first thing I said when we started off on this conversation today which is that I have a different perspective on life. 
I live in an optimistic perspective that mm -hmm. everything is conspiring on my behalf. I am actually being buoyed up by the circumstances of chaos and loss around me. I know that when I go through a loss experience like a divorce or loss of relationship or my money or I'm having struggles with money or my cars get broken down or repossessed or whatever type of serious stressful situation that arises, I know that that's actually happening for me, okay? That's happening for me. So there's the saying, depending on what you're made of, life will either sharpen you up or grind you down, okay? We, we got to be made of diamonds, baby, okay? Sharpened up. Life is happening for us. So no matter how much we want to make up stories, and, and this comes down to just an intuitive leadership ability that I have. I've always had impeccable mindset, impeccable leadership skills, and that's why I'm a good coach today, because I have these in, innate skills. But, um, you know, not believing the story. I don't believe negative stories. I don't believe things are happening against me. I don't believe that anything negative can even happen to me at all. It might challenge me to grow past my limitation, and that can be uncomfortable. But that's life. You know, we're here in the earth school. We're not getting out of here unscathed. So my goal isn't to avoid struggle. My goal is to look at struggle as my edge, my belief system. Where am I being asked to push and grow past my limiting belief system? And therefore, divorce is an opportunity. It's mm -hmm. an opportunity to be better, to love more, to expand more, to be more giving, more loving, more serving of my ex-wife and my children, to look at the uh, desperate, horrible loss as, as something that is working on my behalf. Mm -hmm. How many people do that? I mean, not that's many. Magic, wow. I love that. That's right? a great, I love yeah. that attitude you have always how everything's working for you, you know, that faith, you know? Yeah. Faith. Yeah. So I mentioned faith at the beginning. Um, and it also comes down to my sense of source, you know, which is why I'm a radically self-referencing person. I'm, I'm okay being a black sheep going against the mainstream, marching to the beat of my own drum. I'm okay with this because I have a connection to my source, which is why I have a youthful aura, right? The connection to source is that I don't come from this world. It's like, you know how I said I'm like a messenger from the future? I swear that it's like feels true to me because I have a thread that connects me to a different time and place where everything's okay. And no matter how crazy or weird it gets here at this time space mm -hmm. continuum, I'm like, I know that everything's okay there. So it's almost like I have this really deep trust that nothing can go wrong here in this world mm -hmm. because I know where I have like some sort of premonition or feeling that everything's going to be okay no matter what. Wow. And uh, I don't know, that's a unique thing. I think it can be developed. I help my clients develop this uh, connection and sense of purpose and spiritual depth to excel at their lives, to create mm -hmm. businesses that are really meaningful and ways to make money that are really meaningful so that we're not just always grinding. I mean, if we're, if you're, if a listener right now works a nine to five job that is soul sucking, come on. I mean, how long are you going to put up with that? You are in the driver's seat of your destiny in your life. You can create any version you want mm -hmm. and you can have the most miraculous service-based purpose, fulfilling, life-giving income. You can have that. It's possible. You might have to work for it. You might have to get out of the, the hole you're in now and redo and go through a reinvention, but that's okay. I've done it. And that's where mentorship comes in. If somebody wants mentorship with that, that's what I do. Mm -hmm. And I'll put everything below for you for sure. And join Chains group. I'm in his group. It's amazing. I joined it years ago and it's helped me a lot on my journey through the way too. And okay. Two more things I want to touch on with this topic hydration in the sun. So I think a big mm -hmm. key to like looking our best shining from within is hydration, right? And that's obviously a key with the raw foods. They're full of water content when you say versus if you were eating like a lot of cooked food, standard American food that would essentially, in my opinion, lead to more wrinkles, right? Because your skin is drier from the food. Absolutely. Yeah. It's interesting because I think about eating as hydration and I don't know if most people do. Most people think I have to eat to feel full where two things are wrong with that. For one, if you feel full, you've just burdened your digestive system in a way that's going to age you. And two, if you're not mm. eating for hydration, you're most likely dehydrated. So I eat for hydration. If I do have cooked food, which I will once in a while, you know, I'm human, we're in the mm -hmm. earth. 
So I might have uh, some cooked potatoes or something once in a while. I make a conscious choice that I'm dehydrating myself. Mm -hmm. And then I could make up for it through extra hydration. And I might drink an extra coconut water or have some extra water or extra juice, a green juice or something to make up for it. So I always think, am I dehydrating myself or am I hydrating myself? Mm -hmm. And it's really great because my uh, girlfriend, who I live with, of course, and we share the same lifestyle, she's the exact same way. We are hydration freaks, actually. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and we have the best water. So I get spring water delivered to the house. I absolutely do not do tap water. And I have a Berkey filter, you know, a high quality, mm -hmm. good quality tap filter. So I can drink the tap if I must. Mm -hmm. But really, I go through so much of this high quality premium spring water. It's a service here in Austin. It's around different uh, cities in the United States. But I would recommend people look for a good quality spring water. Access to that is key. So yeah, if you don't have I a went when I went to interview Marcus and Kara in Las Vegas, they had those that delivery too. I can't, I tried to look into that company they had here in Canada, but I can't get it. But they had all the delivery with the glass bottles and it was like the high quality yeah. water. Forget the company. I was like, oh, this water and the water was amazing. It was a big difference. So live water is yeah, what I get. That's key. Live water. And it's pure spring water right out of the ground. It's not filtered or treated, it is microbial and mineral active. So if it sits out too long, um, algae grows in it and stuff like that. It's a live water, really. And so I go through, I mean, we go through like half a gallon a day of the water. And it, we just, you know, I prioritize the expense of this beautiful, delicious water because I live in a big metropolitan city, Austin, Texas, and there's no access to good water except through that. So I prioritize that. Yeah. And but you can also have wells. Like if you have a good quality well, that's mm -hmm. the same thing. So that's a really amazing blessing. If you have a good well, don't ever take that for granted. Well and spring water are the two number ones. And you get B12 from good spring water and good well water. Wow. Because it's microbial active. It's it's a living water. There's microbes in there. There's bacteria. There's uh, natural minerals that then can create the environment where things like B12 can be produced. It's not an automatic, but it's just helpful. For the microbiome. Yeah. And yeah. it's good. It's better to be hydration freaks than like alcoholics or alcohol freaks or something. Right. So this yeah. is good. These are all good if things. If we have alcohol, we are so hesitant to have alcohol. Like, uh, you know, when, if we're like thinking about having alcohol, we have like this much in like a glass, like a tiny bit. We're like one little sip, maybe. And then you notice a difference, right? Like last year I had a glass of wine. I think I had one glass of wine last year and I noticed a big difference. Like it just does not make me feel good. Oh yeah. I mean, I operate at a very high level. I, I have a lot of expectation. Like I come on videos, I have to look and mm -hmm. feel good to produce and deliver quality content. I have clients. I have, I'm always interacting with people. I do not have the luxury to be hung over. Okay. That's just the bottom line. Uh, there's a part of me that wishes I could be 300 pounds, eat steak and be drunk all the time. That'd be great. But that is not my life. Okay. <laughs> but that's the thing. Like, I wish I could drink alcohol, eat crap food and all those things and still feel this good. But the fact of the matter is you can't. <laughs> right. So like, no. Yeah. Sometimes it's like, oh, you fantasize. Oh, I wish I could do that. Or do I want to do that? But no, you feel like crap. So it's not worth it at all for the temporary pleasure of how something tastes or makes you feel. Because at the end of the day, there's an even bigger come down from it and just a dark place you have to sit in to live those types of lifestyles that does not make it worth it. I can't believe people actually live that way. You know, it's absolutely bizarre to me that people can live the cooked food, alcohol based lifestyle. But it's addictive. It like I used so... to live like that. Yeah. yeah. Mm, and yeah. a lot of people don't know how it feels to, to feel this good. Right. Because I used to drink alcohol every day, have steaks, burgers, pizza, go pick up bags of chips, eat Mars bars, all these things. And I had no idea how it was to really feel this good. So maybe if you don't know, you just think, oh, it's not much of a difference if you're eating like that versus you know, getting healthy, right? Yeah, health is very subtle. It's not as exciting as being drunk or eating junk food and being high on sugar spikes and all that. It's, it's very subtle. But what you notice after you've been healthy is when you lose your health. So you don't get a gratification mm -hmm. of like, oh, now I feel on top of the world. It's only in contrast to the lower vibrational lifestyles that you realize how high vibrational uh, health and raw living foods are. So if someone listening to this right now is thinking, I'd love to go raw vegan, it's not necessarily like you're going to hit a new plateau and see the God rays shining on you and everything's going to make perfect sense. 
it's not quite that simple. It's like you might be raw vegan for six months and you're like, does this even matter? And you go back to eating your old way and you're like, oh my God, that was the best I ever felt in my life. How do I yeah. get back there? Yeah. You know? So it's in contrast that we realize how healthy we were. And that's where I'm at now is that I just, it's normalized. I don't feel healthy, to be honest. I, d I don't really, to be honest. You know, I know I am, but I'm just living this lifestyle. So it's You're just normal. used to it. Yeah, it's like I'm used, the contrast. I'm totally used to it. 100%. Everything's about the contrast and the polarity. Yeah. And that's how we learn and realize what we do want, what we don't want. And the, okay, one more thing with the anti-aging, the sun. So do you think you'd still look this good if you were baking in the sun the last couple of decades every day or like a lot? Cause I know you don't spend too much time baking in the sun. I think the sun is important for us. Like my plants here, they need the sun or they would die, right? Like we do need the sun, but in your opinion, looking good, like how much sun is key and can we still like, I take great care of myself, but can I spend my forties baking outside or is that really going to age me by the time I'm your age? I wouldn't bake. Yeah. Um, I love laying in the sun, so I do prioritize it, but I know it's a compromise to my skin. And I actually have a little secret to tell, which is that this is a real secret from the age of 15 to the age of 30. Okay. So from the age of 15 to 30, I never, ever let the sun touch my skin. At all? Like you didn't go outside at all? At all? Zero. Zero. Wow. So I was, it was part of my youth. It was part of the experiment of youth, but I did not go in the sun. My sister loved sunbathing. Okay. Bless her soul. She would lay out and sunbathe with all her friends when we were teenagers, like people like to do. She wanted to be tan and cute in her bikini. Right. But now as a 50 year old, my sister's looking wrinkled, like you would expect a normal 50 year old to look. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that those years of avoiding the sun completely I had a good benefit for my skin. However, we do need vitamin D and we do need some sun. So I do prioritize getting sun exposure directly on my skin now, but I do it in moderation and I do it intentionally. And I also have vitamin D that I take. I get the best quality vitamin D supplements I can. I've experimented with them, but I take vitamin D. Like So if we're in the Northern hemisphere, okay, I don't care how much animal products you eat. Those animal products are fortified with vitamin D. They feed it to the animals. They put it in the milk. They mm -hmm. put it in the eggs. But it's fortified with vitamin D because if we're in the Northern Hemisphere, animals and humans alike are deficient in adequate sun exposure. I just went to Jamaica a couple months ago and I laid out in the sun for an entire 10 days because that was my vacation. So I soaked it up, right? But other than that, I, I take mm. vitamin D supplements so I don't become deficient in vitamin D. I can have the mood and the benefits of vitamin D, but without having to spend an excessive amount of time in the sun. So that's one of my little secrets. Yeah, okay, I do. I do take vitamin D supplements. I'll go for like 50,000 IU a day of mm -hmm. vitamin D. And then I avoid the sun because I don't want, you know, it's not like I avoid it. Like it's bad. The sun is beautiful and the sun's amazing and it's necessary but I don't want to overexpose my skin to sun. So in my youth, I didn't, I mean, here's the, the secret that nobody knows. I avoided the sun for 15 years of my life, like 100% never went in the sun. I was actually a goth kid. I would like cover myself up in black and I was thought I was a vampire. I, that's what I did in my teens, okay? I'm not proud of it now, but that's what I did in my teens. It was the 80s, okay? Mm -hmm. And Besides that, I didn't eat a lot because I wasn't into eating. I was like, screw that. I don't want to eat animals. You know, I didn't overeat for many mm -hmm. decades of my life. I just was a, not a big eater. You know, like I didn't think food is going to be my entertainment. I never ate for entertainment where most people do. Most people eat for entertainment. I didn't. I was like, this is bad entertainment. You know, eating meat and dairy and fried food and restaurant food This mm -hmm. is just not good for me. So I never went to restaurants all through my teens and twenties, never went to restaurants ever. Once. Wow. That's good. Yeah. I would only make food at home. I would make fresh nut milk at home. So those combinations, not overeating, never going to restaurants and never going in the sun for like my entire youth. There's my dirty little secret. I just let you know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> And do you have any vices? Some people think like we need that vice. We need that glass of rye after work to chill out or like just let loose, like have a smoke, have this. Like, do you have any vices or do you feel the need to unwind? And what do you do for that? <laughs> I don't know if I should be totally honest on this, Jillian. Should I be totally honest? <laughs> yeah, obviously. We don't I... judge on this channel. <laughs> 
Um, I don't want people to judge me and, and think that I'm lying about stuff. But, you know, I do have my vices that I will indulge mm -hmm. in as just that I'm human. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm human. I'm a superhuman. Yeah. I'm an exceptional yeah. human. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I am. I live an exceptional lifestyle 99.99999% of the time. But I do have a couple things, you know, like maybe I'll have, I mean, I already didn't talk about this. I'll have a little cooked food here and there, but yeah. not a lot. Usually just steamed vegetables, steamed potato, steamed starch, like something like that. Okay. I had purple sweet potatoes like a couple of days ago yeah. uh, that looked good at the grocery store, the real dark purple ones. So I yeah. bought a couple. And I hear they those. eat those in the blue zones and that's more relatable. Most people yeah. aren't raw 365, 24 hours a day. So like to have some stuff now yeah. and then, and it's respectable yep. to admit that, right. And not be like, I never eat cooked food, but you really yeah. eat a sweet potato. But I, but I'm intentional about the, I want the nutrient density, the phytochemicals of those purple. I want mm -hmm. that, you know, so I prioritize that. I will have a little bit of alcohol. I have a bottle of vodka in my cabinet that I mm -hmm. might have a little, you know, just a little bit once in a while, but so small, so yeah. insignificant. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the other thing, my uh, girlfriend bought me uh, a pipe, like a smoking pipe, like a tobacco pipe for mm -hmm. my birthday a couple of years ago, because she thought like it's very distinguished for like an older guy in his 50s yeah. to like have a pipe. So I have a little bit of pipe tobacco and a pipe that I keep tucked back in my <laughs> corner in my cabinet. <laughs> Getting I, all, I this, rarely all do. the tea today. Like, I, I, <laughs> Right. I might have like one tiny little puff of that thing once, once a month, once every few months, you know? Um, but that's really, that's, I'm being honest. And there that's it is. Good. A Airing lot of my people, dirty laundry. I know a lot of people in their fifties and sixties, they're smoking every day and even smoking cigars every day. Yeah. <laughs> so that's not that bad. That's good. And you're living 99% of your life is extremely healthy and extremely happy service-based in your purpose. Your love is shining. Your money is shining. Your glow is shining. Like what's next? How are you going to elevate next? I don't know. We're going to have to stay tuned and find out. But is there anything else that you want to share with the audience yeah. before we end off? Okay. Anything else you think I've missed or anything you want to share? And I'll put everything for you down below your Instagram, your uh, YouTube, Facebook under Raw Vegan Rising, your group, Raw Vegan Heroes, go join your great coach. So everybody go, if you need some help or you're feeling called, go get some coaching with Shane as well. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Jillian. Thanks so much for having me on. I hope this uh, discussion was helpful for people today to see the glimpse into what my lifestyle is like. I do feel that uh, being a spiritual person and being really radically self-referencing and, you know, having that connection to my deep source and connection is key. I wish that for everybody. And if you don't have it, you can find it with some mentorship. I would recommend you join my group coaching program, Raw Vegan Heroes. You know, it's an amazing community. We have over 3,000 members, I think 3,200 members right now. Everybody who's there is there intentionally. They pay mm -hmm. to be there. It's a small nominal fee, but it's so loving and supportive. And people share recipes and meal ideas and shopping trips and inspiration every day. People are wanting to support each other and get support. So it's a wonderful environment to go from where you are to where you want to be. And I would say, just don't put pressure on yourself to be perfect. There is no such thing as perfect. Don't try to be perfect. And I often recommend to people who reach out to me for help to just join Raw Vegan Heroes for a couple months, be a fly on the wall, watch mm -hmm. and observe what others are doing. Don't make an, any changes. Don't change your diet. Don't drink a single drop of green juice. Don't do anything. Just <laughs> watch what others are doing and see how it feels to you and let an inspiration naturally carry you. That's what I recommend. And also Raw Vegan Heroes welcomes all walks of life and lifestyles, carnivore mm -hmm. people, food addictions, emotional eating disorders, fast food addictions, no matter who you are or where you are on your journey, you're welcome in this healing community. It, it's really an awakening community. This is my life's work and it's my number one coaching program I offer. And it's really to be in our awakening so we can find our purpose, be that spiritual person that really has a purpose and a mission on the earth so we don't get sick, so we don't get cancer and go in the downward spiral. We have to mm -hmm. hook in to something bigger than ourselves. And my, my hope and my prayer is that everybody can find that. So I really go out of my way to help people find that. Raw Vegan Heroes will help you find that. Coaching and mentorship helps people find that. You know, when we need to up-level our lives, find a mentor. That's what mm -hmm. I've done. I recommend it. It's really what people need. But really, yeah. if I could make one recommendation, it's like mentorship gets us there quicker and faster and better. We learn faster together. We go farther together. We can't transform alone. 
you know, isolation is really the devil's workshop. You know, when we are isolated, we go south. The human mind is not mm -hmm. designed to be isolated. Like, look at like Jeffrey Dahmer's and serial killers. They live in isolation. Like that's the dark side of where human isolation takes us. Okay, so we need accountability. We need friendships. We need community. We need to be celebrated for who we are. You know, what's that saying? Like the child of the of the um, tribe, you know, if they're not loved, they burn it down or, oh, I'm going to forget. It's such a brilliant, It's it just sums up what I'm saying. I don't like, know, but not... isolation is a big cause for depression, I think. And people don't realize yeah. like, we need community. My therapist always tells me that. And he just did a session with one of my friends and he was even telling her like, you're all alone all the time in your apartment. Like you're depressed. This is why you're depressed because we're tribal creatures. We yeah. need our community, right? It's it. But, you know, I think that's a big reason so why people key, might yeah. not even realize if they're feeling depressed, you know, no matter what their diet, it's like, even if that's you're the, the rawest so, raw vegan feeling so good, if you're just all alone, yeah. isolated all the time, like you, it, you could be feeling depressed, you know? Yes. And the, uh, the saying is the child who's not embraced by the community burns it down. Mm -hmm. So that's where we need to, if we are not naturally feeling embraced, if we don't have a circle of influence, we need to seek it out. Okay, everybody seek it out. You need to choose your own crab bucket, get out of the default crab bucket of your friends and family who bring you down and your partner, your you know spouse, like we talked about, is bringing you down and be intentional about who you spend time with. And uh, join me. Hey, join Raw Vegan Heroes. Be on the awakening movement, everybody. That's what I say. Mm -hmm. and, and join the and channel. Much love. Subscribe if you don't already, and I'll put everything down below for Shane. So you guys can go follow Shane and follow my Instagram, follow both of us, get into everything, get more inspired, get feeling better, get your community, live a better life. And I love that quote you just said about the child that's not embraced by the community will burn down. So true. I've never heard that. What a good way yeah, to put it. It's such a good way to put it. I love that. So yeah, we have, and we're going to burn it down if we don't have community. Okay. We're going to self-sabotage. That's, that's what it means. We are going to self-sabotage. So mm -hmm. let's not self-sabotage everybody. Let's come no. into a loving, beautiful community. The raw vegan awakening is really more than just uh, people. It's more than food. It's an awakening uh, that fortifies our soul. Okay. Fortifies our microbes. It fortifies our brain and our hormones and oxygenates our body and our mind. I mean, these are the physical results. Um, biophotons from raw foods in our cells that gives the mitochondria in our cells more energy, literally. And the enzymes in the food help our body reproduce the DNA. So our DNA is actually functioning properly. All mm -hmm. of these things help us look and feel our best. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. We want to feel our best in every area like you. We want to be checking off all those boxes. So and be intentional. And I love it. I've loved this talk. And I hope you guys have as well. I hope I truly hope it's added some value to your life, to your day. I hope you feel inspired and just feel, feel called to just improve your life and make your life better because that's what this channel is all about. And I truly love you guys. Make sure to subscribe, give this a thumbs up and continue on with the next two awesome videos I'm going to put on the screen right now. And we will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.